Refugees in a New Land podcast from the Times News and MagicValley.com. We're following a refugee family from the Democratic Republic of the Congo as they move to Twin Falls and start a new life. Here's Enterprise Editor Virginia Hutchins. For a family from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Twin Falls in January is scary cold. Too cold to walk around town. Too cold to let the children play in the snow. So refugees Kani Gamba Malabwe and Beatrice Bahadi and their two children, Sarah and Daniel, were spending a lot of time in their apartment, at least until Allison Bangutter got back to town. Allison is a Twin Falls stay-at-home mom who teaches piano lessons and is raising four children. She volunteered to be a mentor for newly arrived refugees. Kani Gamba's family is the first family that the College of Southern Idaho Refugee Center assigned to Allison. Her assignment help the family adjust to Twin Falls life. It's a strange transition. Connie Gamba and Beatrice know very little English. Until they arrived in Twin Falls in November, three-year-old Sarah and one-year-old Daniel had lived only in a refugee camp in Malawi. On January 8, Connie Gamba and the children were at the Twin Falls Public Library with Allison for story time and a craft session. We had reporter Titona Dunlap at the library that morning. Here's what Titona told me when she got back to the newsroom. It kind of seemed like a Connie Gamba like the scene at first. Cause I, I, so they're singing in the story time? Yeah, they okay. would sing and then they would like read books and you know stuff like that. But when I first got there, they were singing a song about if you want me to sing, you know, shrug your shoulders, if you want me to sing, raise your eyebrows, and then I could see Mary. It's an ESL lesson. <laughs> yeah, I could see Mary was like telling Connie Gamba what the words meant, and he was kind of like laughing, you know? And then I saw him turn to Sarah and Daniel, and he must have told them, you know, this is what you're happy. this is what they're asking you to do. So he was kind of like laughing about that. Okay, that was a nice moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> During the song, Connie Gamba turned to interpreter Mary Lapumba to ask for a translation of Raise Your Eyebrows. Then he encouraged his children to make the actions. Daniel was inclined to wander, but Sarah watched the storytime leader dress a felt bear on a board at the front of the room, in front of the crowd of children. Okay, so this week, I'm going to talk about bears. So, to start our bear story time, we're going to talk to our friend. Do you guys remember what his name is? Toby. And Toby's naked. Oh my goodness. So, you guys were outside. What's the weather like? Is it like this? I said, I know. Yes? No? Is it like this? Yeah. Or is it like this? Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah. Is it kind of a mix between these two? Kind of rainy, kind of snowy? Yeah. yeah? Yeah. So what do you guys think Toby should wear? Santa. The story incorporated a counting game. Another English lesson. Three little bears deciding what to do. One fell asleep. And then there were two. One, two. Two little bears having lots of fun. One fell asleep and then there were one. One. One little bear, feeling all alone, ran to his mother, and then there were zero. zero. In the next room, storytime participants made bear paws out of paper bags. Sarah seemed excited, gluing all the pieces onto her bear paw carefully. Connie Gamba watched and smiled and helped Daniel put his bear paw in his hand and make a clawing motion. Allison asked the children if they had bears back home. They didn't, of course, but Allison told them they could make sounds like lions and be close enough. Allison helped Connie Gamba check out a few movies that day, something to give the family a break from watching The Lion King and The Jungle Book over and over in their apartment. Can you make bear noise? Yeah. 
Would that be good? We just have to have one beat, so we have to make sure we return them next Friday. Thank you. Okay? The next day, Titona watched another outing organized by Allison. On Saturday, I went along with Allison and Beatrice. Uh, Allison invited Beatrice and the kids to go with her and her kids to the Cabin Fever Day. And so they chose to go to the planetarium. And um, to the planetarium, they had a reptile meet and greet. And then they saw like a, a live sky tour inside the planetarium. And I didn't actually get to sit with them because it was kind of crowded. So I sat in the back and was trying to like, you know, watch to see if they would point to the ceiling or if they seemed excited. Um, I couldn't really tell, but afterwards I asked, you know, what the kids thought. And they said like one um, little preview show into it, Sarah fell asleep. So oh, she, no. she didn't see any of it. And then um, Mary told me that Beatrice thought the images on the screen were kind of like scary because they kind of like come out at you. So I think they like, I don't know if she liked it, but they kind of like startled her. And then after that, they had the reptiles, like snakes and lizards. And was Sarah more into that? It was kind of funny because Sarah seemed interested, like she wanted to touch the snakes, but her mom was really scared of them. So Sarah was kind of like, you know, creeping towards a little girl that was holding a snake in her lap and her mom like yelled at her in Swahili to like get over here. <laughs> so she didn't actually touch any of the snakes. But that was kind of funny because yeah, Beatrice was pretty freaked out. <laughs> I'm sure just not, they're not gonna let yeah. ones that bite like people hold them. But there's only I think there's rattlesnakes that live in North America. Oh, okay. the, and the rattlesnakes are poisonous, but I don't think they have any rattlesnakes here. Most of these kids are are I'm sorry. Not poisonous. Not. Oh, did you see them? She's scared of snakes, but I think she feels brave because that little girl has it. Next stop, the McDonald's drive through window. Beatrice ate fries but refused to try a hamburger. By the time Allison's group arrived at a bowling alley, their next cabin fever activity, Beatrice was eating an apple. Um, so at the bowling alley, at first Beatrice didn't want to bowl. Like she, when it was her turn, she was telling everyone like, oh no, no, like she would just rather sit there. But everyone like encouraged her and basically made her bowl. Beatrice, you want to try? Come on. I'm gonna show you. You got your shirt on, you gotta do it. <laughs> But it seemed like she liked it. Like the first time she tried it, she hit down like I think like four or five pins and she like, you know, was smiling and seemed like she liked it. And then the second time she went up to bowl, she almost got a strike. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Our photographer on the scene at the bowling alley was Drew Nash. Here's Drew. So I didn't really have the angles I wanted. Uh, the lighting's horrible, you know, it's bowling alley. Um, especially just you know, their, their skin color is so dark compared to a very bright white of the lanes. So uh, the latitude of the, the digital cameras just it wasn't there. So we'll have to do some dodging and burning and stuff. Uh, 
within ethics, but yeah, we'll definitely have to play with the images a little bit after the fact. Allison took her volunteer mission seriously. Three days later, on January 12, Titona and photographer Stephen Reese tagged along on Beatrice's trip to Walmart with Allison. Here's Stephen. Uh, we were grocery shopping with Beatrice, Daniel, Sarah, Mary, and Allison, who's their mentor. And um, basic grocery stuff, the types of foods that you want were the same. As she would eat back home, she was looking for cabbage and tomatoes for stews and uh, lots of fresh fruit. Actually, maybe more fresh fruit than your typical Idahoan eats. Um, but the real challenge was finding makeup for her. She had a very specific, oh, yes. compact black opal, which is for people with darker skin colors. It was it's like an ethnic, you know, kind mm -hmm. of uh, cosmetic, which took like half an hour to find. <laughs> I think eventually we did find something that was similar. The interpreter, the mentor, and the journalists couldn't find the lotion Beatrice wanted either, or the lip balm she wanted, and they were stumped by her description of the razor she hoped to buy. Oh, you a, a razor blade? Ah. Hmm? You have to shave your... Ah. Shave the legs? Yes, yes. 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 Yes, what is it for? You can use it to cut your nails. Stop to cut your nails? Stop. 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 Nail cutters? No. No, not that. It's different. I've seen nail scissors. I can show you what we've got. I'll show you. You can see. Sit down. Um, while we're here, we should look at the TV antennas. Antennas, yeah. Sit down. You're going to fall on your bum. I can't push the cart. Oh, I think they also bought a, a, an antenna for their TV. Because one of the times that I visited their house, they wanted me to help them fix their television, and I told them that they'll probably need like an antenna of some sort, and so they bought one of those. So maybe the next time I go visit, they'll like have some some local channels to watch. Three days later, on January 15, Titona came back to the newsroom with some great color from Allison's house. Connie Gamba and Beatrice and the, their kids, Sarah and Daniel, spent the afternoon with Allison and um, two of her children at her house. And um, they were mostly there doing like laundry. And then while they were waiting for the laundry to be done, they like ate lunch. And uh, Allison was trying to teach them how to cook oatmeal cookies or bake oatmeal cookies. And um, it was kind of interesting watching them trying to decide what to eat for lunch. And then also Allison was there without Mary, so there was no interpreter. So she was trying to convey, you know, like what leftovers meant to to them and what the different things in her her fridge were. I have this is lasagna. Do you know lasagna? No way. The lasagna didn't get any takers, but it wasn't the only choice Allison had to offer. This is soup. It's a different kind. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, carrots. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is Carrots. Yeah, carrots. It has carrots. It has celery. Do you understand celery? Yeah. And it has potatoes. Do you understand potatoes? Beatrice took the stew, but her husband was harder to convince. Connie Gamba, do you want to have some stew for lunch? It's like soup. Do you want some? Are you hungry? I don't mind if you eat here. Do you want to eat something? I'm hungry. If you're not hungry, it's okay, but you are welcome to eat. No, it's No, okay. He doesn't want to eat. While Allison warmed up the stew for Beatrice, she also gave a lesson on how to use a microwave. 
for minis. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, or you could also say, like if you have popcorn, pom pom, okay. you can just press that button, pom -pom. and then it will make the popcorn pop. Oh. Or if you want to make a hot drink, like uh, hot chocolate, have you had hot chocolate? Yes. Yeah, you can press that. Or you can, this is reheat. I don't know what that does. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then it also, you can press a timer. So if you're like, oh, I'm cooking something here mm -hmm. for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. I can press timer, one, zero, 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 and then it will let me know when it has been 10 minutes. That's what a timer, a timer now does. Now one minute, it is okay. Fix, now it can. You see, now it says end. The end, it's done. So then we can look. Let's see. I will wash my hands. <laughs> but I think it is done. So we will see. I think that is good. Okay, Beatrice, you can try the stew, see if you like it. It might be too hot, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> if it's good, you can give Kani Dama some. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's the beef. Do you like beef? Beef? Yeah. It's cow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it beef? Beef. So I'm going to do mine for two minutes because I have more. Oh. I'm putting more in mine because I know I like it. So just press that. Yeah, there it goes. Pretty nice, huh? So. <laughs> Allison offered a corn dog to three-year-old Sarah, but Sarah backed away. Good. That's <laughs> good. That's good. It's good. It's kind of like, well, you know, like French fries. It doesn't taste that different than French fries, like chips. Like well, chips, right? Chips. Is it also chips? Kind of. No way. Huh? Do you want to try corn dog, Sarah? No, try, oh, try it. Try it. Try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> They don't have to. No, they don't have to. They don't have to. Allison was working hard to give the family new experiences, like baking oatmeal cookies. So we need one cup of white sugar and one cup of brown sugar. So I keep my white sugar over here. I just have it in a bin. Okay, Beatrice, you do it. So you want to fill that up with white sugar. Probably just scoop it. Or you just a spoon. Yeah, whatever you want to do. We want it to be full all the way. Perfect. Okay, then we'll put it in the bowl. Yeah. Uh huh. Perfect. Cool. Okay, and then we'll have Connie go do the brown. That day, Titona noticed a big change happening. And I also noticed that Connie Gamba's English is like. He's getting really good at English, I think. Like, we were actually able to ask him questions, and he, you know, didn't fully understand, but he was able to respond back, you know, and it showed that he understood some words, or at least a little bit of what we asked, and that's something that we couldn't do when we first met him. So it's not just a difference in confidence, but he's actually learning English. It seems quickly. like it. I don't know. Maybe he's becoming more relaxed with us too. I don't know, but I just noticed that um, me and Steve can um, communicate with him better, and so can Allison. And I asked Allison, like, have you noticed a difference? And she said yes. Um, Beecher still um, can't. She doesn't really understand as well as he does. Like she turns to him and asks for him to interpret a lot, but. I mean, she's more um, vocal than, you know, when you first met them. In Congo, do you guys have, like, desserts? Sweets? Um, cookies? Pastries? Is there? No? Uh, what would you call it? Sweets? I don't know. So food like this that you're making. Cake, cakes? Cakes? Oh. Yeah, it's similar. Oh. Uh, Lament shows. Cakes. Connie Gamba doesn't cook at home, but at Allison's house, she didn't give him a choice. Connie Gamba and Beatrice both crowded close when Allison turned on the mixer. Whoa! It's kind of spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I still heard it. Oh, boom! Oh, yeah! Right into the front of Gamba. Right oh. too. Better watch out. 
With federal benefits about to start phasing out and a baby on the way, Connie Gamba needs to find work quickly, whether he's comfortable with English or not, and he's feeling the pressure. In our next episode, we'll hear what his job search turns up. Refugees in a New Land is produced by The Times News in Twin Falls, Idaho, with Enterprise Editor Virginia Hutchins, reporters Titona Dunlap and Julie Wooten, photographers Drew Nash and Stephen Reese, and digital editor Kyle Hansen. Music by Chris Zabriskie. Find more about this project and complete coverage of South Central Idaho's news at magicvalley.com.